Hey, what's up everybody? Zach here at HyperRPG. I'm the CCO, but oftentimes also the technical director of our studio. Hell no. Where's the sound? Zach, oh. you wanna get that volume for us there, bud? Thank you all for joining me today on what will be the first of a series of videos called HyperKit, where we break down how we've set up our streaming studio that outputs anywhere between 20 to 40 hours of live content per week, all with the crew of one or two technical people operating everything. There's so many things that I could talk about with how we've set up our studio, but today I'm going to be specifically talking about the A10 Mini because it just came out and I think it's an absolutely amazing piece of hardware that's going to change the streaming game for a very long time. When I built Geek & Sundry's live network five years ago, Oh man, we set the entire thing up with Blackmagic cameras, switchers, and I've never really turned back. There is no other option for getting the level of quality that I want within the price range that's feasible. So when Blackmagic hit me up about this little guy, I was immediately excited because I have their television studio HD and we've used that on a couple live productions here and there. And it's a, it's a nice switcher, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't really what we were looking for. This, on the other hand, has some really neat features that fit really well into our workflow. For me, this is like the Go XLR, but for video, you know, everybody started picking up the Go XLR and you saw everybody's audio quality simultaneously across the streaming platforms just jump up. This could do that for video. It's only $300 and it's a full featured production switcher. So on here, we're looking at one, two, three, four, individual HDMI inputs. You also have a mic one and a mic two input for direct audio feed in if you wanna bypass the HDMI audio that you're getting. So you have really clean audio coming in from whichever source you choose. The most interesting part that I know a lot of you all are going to be extremely excited about in the streaming community is this webcam out from USB-C. It will be read immediately by OBS. It's kind of working the same way that the Magewell cards work, where it takes your input and it makes it kind of a direct show camera that looks like a webcam and your software, so Skype will pick it up, OBS will pick it up, XSplit, whatever it is you're using, immediately you have the output. A couple weeks ago we were doing a show called Post Ghost. I couldn't really bring our entire rig out there, but we wanted to do some really cool stuff like switching between a wireless HDMI system that's moving around this house being kind of controlled by the audience into a sit down interview and to do that seamlessly. So I was able to take this little bad boy plug it into the computer that was at that location, and within 10 minutes have the software downloaded, outputting from the webcam out directly into OBS. I set up a quick macro to be able to switch between the full keyed out and the wireless HDMI, and all this was done within a course of about an hour. We didn't want to output from OBS because the internet in that house wasn't good enough. So we have our IRL backpack that we carry around and use for different jobs. And in that situation, I wanted to be able to monitor with OBS. So I ran out into OBS from there, monitored with headphones on that computer and controlled the macros. But then we did HDMI out directly into a live view unit. And I realized something while we were doing that. This opened us up to a whole new possibility with some of our IRL streaming. We've traveled the world with our IRL rig and done some really cool stuff. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 But we're very limited by the Live View hardware and what it can accomplish. On the HDMI input of the Live View here, if there's any break in video whatsoever, however you're outputting will immediately disconnect. If we hit like a bad patch in internet, or our camera dies because somebody's not paying attention to the batteries, boom, our stream is dead. Now we've set up some software that I can dive in some other time for you about how we have everything to auto switch to a video. I can log into my phone and change it. If you want more info on how we do that, let me know in the comments. It means that we're kind of locked to using one camera source when we're IRLing. We tried using different switches, but the problem with HDMI switches is whenever you switch the input, you're technically dropping signal completely and then coming back up, it just drops. This guy, the A10 Mini, you're always outputting something from that HDMI output. So we realized that we can be running HDMI out from this directly into our live view, run the 12 volt power out of this into our backpack, attach this to our backpack, and now we've got a multi-camera switcher that we're on the mobile go. And I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but I know there's people out there who do IRL streaming who are looking for something like this. I've talked to a couple of them personally, and I even messaged them after this came out and said, yo, 
this is what we've been looking for. Now these are just a couple of things that make us here at HyperRPG extremely excited about this. We are using this quite a bit right now on some of our YouTube content, our mobile content, and when we get hired out for jobs away from our studio. If I had to say anything negative about this device, because of its portability, I really do wish there was a way you could preload macros into it. And I know that that's not really something Blackmagic has ever done before, but it's something I would absolutely love for production where I'm out on location somewhere and I don't know if I'm gonna have access to all the things I need. Being able to completely remove the computer from the equation and use just the device would be really, really cool. And to clarify on that, you don't technically need the computer to use this. It just gives you a lot of extra features. When you plug this bad boy into the computer, you have the entire Blackmagic ATEM software control suite at your fingertips, which gives you a lot more depth and control over your devices but you don't need it. But I would love for the opportunity to put macros on the device cached in there somewhere. Full disclosure, Blackmagic sent us this device, asked us to check it out. They've been doing that for a while and they wanted us to put together some sort of video to tell you our thoughts on it with pretty much no guidance. And I'm giving you my honest opinion right now. This thing is awesome. So thank you everybody for watching HyperKit. I hope you've enjoyed. If you wanna see more of our setup, please do let us know in the comments. I would love to break down our big bad boy back there and how we've set it up, how we've set up our macros, our Elgato stream deck, and a lot of the other things that we use for our multi-level studio. We're using every room we can in this house and we've set something up in all of them to operate as efficiently as possible. So if you're enjoying this, please, please do let me know and thank you so much for watching.